Happy holiday, and it's time for Baron's Buzz. Joining us to talk about the latest issue is senior editor Jack Howe. Hello. Good to see you. Good to be here. So this issue is all about the dividends. You know, it's a tough invest. It's a tough environment for investors. Yes. Everyone's looking for income. You help them out by giving them the 10 best dividends. You stocks. want dividends? We got them. And you don't have to go piling into companies that make cereal and companies that sell cigarettes and companies that sell electric power where you get <laughs> no, your yield. there's nothing wrong with But you're, you're paying, yeah, well, you're paying 20, 22 times earnings for companies that don't grow very fast. Right. Our in-house dividend expert, Lawrence Strauss, has gone searching for companies that are trading at below market valuations that have a little bit of growth where they can increase their payments over time and where you can find, you know, 3%, sometimes, you know, 4% dividend yields. He's got a list of some attractive ones. And are we allowed to say what any of these I'll, are? I'll mention, Do you have any hints for us? I'll mention two of the ten. Okay. Uh, Carnival, uh, the, the cruise ship huh. operator is one. You know, these tend to be the, the stocks where there's some kind of concern on the part of investors that's keeping share prices low and yields high with Carnival. The business is doing very well, but everyone worries about capacity. You know, it's just like airlines where people say, oh, they're going to build too much. But what's happening is you have a growing cruise business in China. You can move ships over there. They're soaking up excess capacity. The business looks good for several years to come. Yeah. And also AbbVie, the drug maker, it makes a lot of its money from one drug, uh, Humira, which is, uh, first of all, it's growing nicely. It's a nice problem to have when you make the bulk of your money from something that's growing. And it's right. an easy problem to fix. You know what? You make more drugs or you do a <laughs> deal. You do something to diversify going forward. Right. And maybe you get a little valuation lift when that happens. In the meantime, investors get a nice dividend yield. All right. For the other eight, you got to read Barron's. Next up, you wrote a piece about fertilizer. Yeah. Key investment opportunity. We're not going to reveal the stock, but I must say you go into some very um, impressive... Thank Nerdy you. detail on this. Thank you. I've spent a lot of time thinking about fertilizer this week. Uh, fertilizer these days, of course, is all manufactured from fossil fuels. There's no animal you know, byproducts involved here. <laughs> it's a polite uh, way to say it. Right. There has been an absolute crash in, in prices for some of these things, prices for ammonia, for example, or, or, or the things you use to get nitrogen to plants. A lot of it just has to do with excess capacity. China, in particular, has blown out capacity. Hmm. <clears throat> Here in the U.S., we still enjoy a key fertilizer advantage over China, which is that we make the stuff from natural gas. They're using coal. It's more expensive for them. There's ferocious demand in the U.S. for fertilizer because corn is particularly hungry for the stuff, and we grow a lot of corn here. So we use all of it that we make here and then some, means we have to import some that, that Chinese fertilizer keeps our prices here high and keeps margins wide, even during a downturn for domestic producers. Interesting. I've got to look at one that's really slumping right now. Its stock is down by more than half. The dividend yield is gigundous, and uh, I think the business is going to come around. The fertilizer price will come around in a couple of years. Meanwhile, it looks to me like it can continue to afford to pay this dividend for a couple of years while investors wait. All right, we'll look for that. And last but not least, we're talking about Food apps, which we live in New York City. Yes. Ordering food is second nature here. You, but three you quarters youngsters, of Americans don't order food on apps. You youngsters know me. all about this. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I use a telephone. But look, no, you don't even U have Facebook. In the UK, we have they, some work to do. <laughs> we've got to compare. This comes from a, a Jeffrey survey. It's the difference between the UK and the US. They're all about ordering on apps and on the web over there. Um, half of people in the UK have done it versus 10% here in the US. And I guess it may, maybe it bodes well for the grub hubs. And, 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 and Why is that? Are they just Well, you would more think that you could get more Americans to come around closer right. to the UK number, maybe not matching it. It's a little denser over there. The restaurants tend to be closer yeah. to the homes. It's a little bit longer of a wait here for... Uh, for delivery, but it's got to look at the, some of the some of the cultural differences between the U.S. and U.K. when it comes to ordering food. The U.K. they're not uh, terribly big on tipping. It's a little, <laughs> That's true. Little, That's little true. spoiler alert: a third of people say they would never consider tipping a delivery person. Which is great when you go to the U.K. You don't have to do it. <laughs> I highly recommend these apps, but. I'm not endorsing any of them. I, it just makes life easy. You I have highly to try it. recommend the telephone. Oh please. Okay. Well, enough of this debate. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And you can